What's up, folks? I'm having an interesting event at work. Our network has become extraordinarily shy, and it's no bueno, and a lot of the county is down, except for my stuff, because I've seen this movie before. So I got my latest Postgres back up, downloaded it to my house, fired up my Postgres PostGIS Docker image, loaded the data in, fired up a local copy of my HTTP API, don't call it REST, and I went to the Azure web server, yes, it's Azure, don't ask, and I pointed the proxy from the county to my house, and things have been working great. And now it's just a race between whether the county will fix its network or my ISP will show up in black helicopters and people on ropes and bags over the head. But none of that's important. What I want to talk to you about is something I screwed up in a number of my sites, and that is when there's network things going on, I'm not telling the users about it. And that's no good. What I do is I do a console.log in fetch requests to let me know in the console what's going on. But some poor user is there typing an address into your autocomplete bar and seeing squat. And that is no good. So while I'm dealing with this problem, I thought I would make a toast. A toast is a UI element. I don't even know why it's called a toast where you've seen them. A little box will pop up from the bottom of your screen and go, hey, some information, and then it'll bugger off. And that's what a toast is. So I thought I'd make one as kind of an error trap on my fetch requests. So when things are going wrong, you'll see a toast. And it looks like this. Everything on this site is working fine except for the property information, most of it because that's buried in a Kama server in the county, which is currently not available. So now I click property. I get this little message with a hopefully not too dystopian uh, warning, and it goes away. And you can also click on it to make it go away faster. So that's what that looks like. Now I wanted to show you how I did that. I did that with Svelte, but you could do that in any framework or with plain old JavaScript. And it's, it's not too hard. So in Svelte, I decided to make one toast component. That way I, I'm not loading it all over the place. And that by doing that, I really need to put the toast, uh, the toast message and, and toast type and so forth in my global data store. So that's what I did. I just dropped it right here. I said toast data and I have a message and a message type and a load delay if you want to delay it popping up, which is handy if it's say uh, you, you, you want to show that when the page loads, like you want to give a, a snarky message to everybody using i11 when the page loads. Um, that way you can delay that because you want the page to settle down before you start throwing things around the screen. Uh, and a dismiss delay, and this is how long it'll hang out before it buggers off. And you can set that to zero and it will just stay up till somebody clicks on it. So that's it in the store. That's all I really need. And then I just export that from the store as a writable Svelte data store. So the toast itself. So I load that bit from my data store and I'll put all this code. If you're on YouTube, look in the show notes. There'll be a link to the blog post, and that's where I usually put code samples. This will also be part of the GitHub repo for GeoPortal and some of my other sites. So you don't have to write furiously while I'm, while I'm doing this. I get a fly transition. That makes the thing kind of come up and go away in a nice way from Svelte. Svelte has some very nice transitions. Svelte is awesome. And I've got two variables here that I need. One is whether to show it or not. By default, that's a hard no. And the second is I have a message that's set to the default value of the store message, which is an empty string. Because I only want to show a message if the message is different from the last message. I don't want to keep popping things up if it's the same thing over and over again. So I'm going to subscribe to that toast message from the store. And if my message that I've stored is not the same as the toast message, I know I need to show something. So all this is basically doing is saying show true 
And what these timers are, are is if, if there's a load delay, it delays that. And if there is a dismiss delay, so if you want it to dismiss on its own, it'll do a little uh, show false uh, set timeout for that. Then at the end, I just set the message to the latest toast message. So again, I'm not repeating that. So pretty straightforward. Then you can also, for no matter what's going on, you can click on it to make it go away. That's just a nice thing to do for users. So I just have a handle click to set that show to false. Then I have four different types of toasts. I'll probably only ever use one. I don't know. You know, when the network's down, yeah, I mean, you just start doing stuff. So I've, I've got these different message types and I'll set different colors for the toast as well as, not here, but as well as different icons for the toast. So a little positioning stuff. And here's our if show, go ahead and draw this. And this is where that toast is. I should give credit for the format of that to Huda Damar. Thank you, whoever that is. And what I'm doing here is these are Tailwind classes and you can just stick a function or a variable from Svelte straight in here. So that's what I'm doing for background colors and border colors for these elements. And then for the SVG icon, I'm just doing basically doing if it's a warning, use this path. If it's a, if it's a success, use that path and so forth. And then down here we put the message. So this is a, a fairly, fairly simple component. Now to call that, to set that toast value so it'll, your subscription here will trigger, I just made this little toast maker function. That way I can not write this every time, I can just include it once in whatever components I need it to. And it just has some default values for message and message type and so forth, and then it just does a toast message set. You can uh, use uh, your Svelte store stuff in any JavaScript file. It does not have to be a Svelte component. So I'm just getting toast message from the store, and then doing a toast message set. So now when I have you know, my property, which is currently no bueno, or whatever, as I roll this out to other parts of the application, I can just import that toast maker, and then down where something's gone bad, so this fetch has caught an error, I can say, we're having a problem loading this data, or I could check what the actual error is and say the actual, and change my toast based on that. So I'm setting the toast message and the toast type as an error, and I'm leaving the default uh, timing stuff the same, and off it goes. So that's it. That's how I'm putting that toast in there, and that's something I really should have done bad me, because I imagine every time the network has blinked, somebody's been typing something in like the search box and getting nothing, and I, you gotta let them know what's going on. All right, that's what I got for you. I'll put the code in the blog post, and it'll also be in the GitHub repo for like a GeoPortal probably by the end of the day. Well, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.